Hello everyone and welcome to the beginner's guide to simulations where we're taking a look at every simulation that Blender has to offer. We started out with the fluid and fire and now we're moving on to the rigid body system. What are rigid bodies? Rigid bodies are a way to simulate the motion of solid objects. They can move around, smack into each other, but they will not deform. Animation keyframes also affect rigid bodies if you'll enable it with this checkbox. Now there are two types of rigid bodies to remember. There are active and passive rigid bodies. Active means that it's gonna be dynamically simulated and it will react to gravity, wind, and other forces. Passive means that it's gonna be stuck in place and will not move, but it will still collide and interact with the simulation. One thing to keep in mind with rigid bodies is that the position of your object will remain the same as you play your animation. You can think of rigid bodies as basically a constraint or a modifier. The original mesh will still be in its exact position until you apply the rigid body. And you can do this by going up to object, down to rigid body, and then selecting apply transform. Now the object will be moved to that new location and you can see this in the properties panel. Another aspect of the rigid body system are constraints. These can limit certain actions or movement based on what you set it up as. They are a little tricky to set up, but don't worry, we're going to be covering a couple of them in this video. So to cover the rigid body system, we're going to be creating this animation that you see on screen. Down in the description, there is a setup blend file that has all of the objects, but there are no simulation settings. We're going to be covering all of those in this video. So go ahead, download that blend file and open it up and we can get started. So here we are in the blend file and we can see that we have all of these different objects in our scene. Now feel free to change this up however you like. If you want to add your own obstacles for the UV sphere to go through, feel free to do that. For now, let's go ahead and get started by selecting the UV sphere and let's add the rigid body system to it. Over on the right side, we're going to go over to the physics panel right here. Select the rigid body. Now if we play our animation, we can see the UV sphere just falls straight down. What we need to do first is change a couple settings on the right side. The first thing I'll do is set the mass right here up to a value of two, just so it weighs a little bit more. Mass really affects how the simulation will interact with other objects. If one object weighs heavier than another object, it'll change the speed at which it falls and how it interacts with the other objects in the scene. Next up, we're going to enable collision for our other objects. Let's select the cylinder right here, enable rigid body, and then for this time, we're going to use the passive setting since we don't want this object to move. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the shape option right here. Currently, it's set to convex hole. This is basically the rigid body collision shape of the object. Convex hole means that it's going to be shrink wrapped around your mesh. In this case, it's shrink wrapped around the bottom right here. So it's treating the inside as solid object. And if we play our animation, you're going to see the UV sphere shoots out of here. Instead of using convex hull, we need to switch it over to the mesh option. Now, if we restart, you can, you're gonna see it works properly. Next up, let's select the lid down here. We're gonna enable rigid body. This time we're gonna leave it on active, but we're gonna turn on the animated button down here. Over the course of 10 frames, I want this lid to open up and then drop the UV sphere down. So on frame 10 right here, we're gonna select K and go rotation. 10 frames later at frame 20, we're going to hit R, then X, 90, and enter, and then add in another rotation keyframe. Now if we play our animation, this should work perfectly. Now for the door right here. What I want is for the UV sphere to push through these two doors and then fall through a couple more as it goes down. Now if we were to try to add that animation, it's not going to really work that great. So let's add in a rigid body constraint to do that for us. With this outside ring selected, let's go rigid body, switch the type over to passive. And for the shape, again, we're gonna wanna use mesh since there is space in the middle right here. Let's also set the collision margin down to zero. Then we'll select the, the door on the right side. Let's go rigid body and then leave it on, leave it on active. And then also again, we're gonna enable collision margin and bring it down to a value of zero. So to add a constraint, what we need to do is select the door first, then holding shift, we'll select the outside ring. Then go over to object, down to rigid body, and then select connect right here. Now these two objects are connected with this constraint. 
we want to move this constraint to be where the constraint is located, which is right on that side, because we want it to rotate downwards. If we take a look on the right side, we're going to see the type is set to fixed. Fixed means that it's going to be stuck in place. And if we play it, you can see it's not moving. Instead of using fixed, we're going to want to use generic spring. Now there is an option for hinge, and you might think that this is what we want to do, but this is actually not it. Hinge will react to gravity, so that means it's just going to fall straight down. We want it to fall down and then snap back into place. And for that, we're going to use generic spring. Now there are a lot of different settings here, so let's just close off all of these to organize our menu just a little bit, and then we'll open up the limits menu. The limits menu allow you to limit the angle and movement of this object, and it's based on the constraint rotation. So we can see the Y is pointed in this direction. So this is the setting that we want to enable for it to rotate along the Y. Let's enable all of these. We'll set the X angle to zero, the Z angle to zero as well, and then for the Y angle, let's go negative 180 and then positive 180. So it has a lot of range for the constraint to move. And also, I don't want this object to fall down, so let's enable the limits on the position and set every single one of these to zero. Next up, we're gonna open up the springs option, and here is where we're gonna enable it to snap back into place. Since we're rotating it, we want to use the angular settings here. We're going to enable the Y and set the stiffness of the spring up to 20 and the dampening up to a value of 1 as well. Now let's duplicate this constraint and move it to the left side. So I'm going to press Shift D. We'll move it over to the left side. Now a very important step right here is to make sure you save your project just in case Blender crashes because it does have a habit of doing that when working with constraints. Make sure to constantly save as you're working with your animation. So with this new constraint selected, we're going to open up the objects menu. And for the second object, we're going to get rid of that, use the eyedropper tool and select the cube 001. And also we need to select it, go over to the rigid body, enable it here, and now it should work properly. So again, we'll restart, save our project and play it. And there we go, we can see it is working exactly how we want it to. So now what we can do is go into front view, go into wireframe, we'll restart the animation and box select all of these objects and just duplicate them a couple times using shift D. Z to lock it to the Z axis, we'll place it right about there. Then if you hit shift R, it will duplicate that last action. And now we have three of these. So now let's play our animation and here is the result. Now we're gonna move on to the loop. Let's select the loop right here, enable rigid body, set the type over to passive, and then for the shape, again, we need to use the mesh option. For the sensitivity margin, let's set that down to zero, and then we'll do the same thing for this object. Rigid body, passive, mesh, and then the sensitivity down to zero. We're going to add in a force field to push the UV sphere up through the loop and then down this way. Let's go ahead and add that in by selecting this object, Shift S, cursor to selected. Then we'll press Shift A, go over to force field, and then add in a wind force field right here. Let's rotate this 90 degrees so it's pointed in this direction, and then we'll set the strength of this all the way up to 1500. One problem with this right now is if we play our animation, you're gonna see it's already affecting the UV sphere before it reaches this position. And to fix that, we're going to enable the fall off options over here on the right side. This will allow us to constrain the force field to a certain location. Underneath the max distance, we're going to set this up to a value of around 10. And then also for the shape, we need to switch it over to tube. Now again, this is still going to affect this UV sphere, and that's because we need to constrain along the Z axis as well. So underneath the radial options, let's use a max distance of Let's go 0.5. So now it's only going to affect it when it's in this spot right here. Let's play our animation and see what it looks like. And that is working perfectly. One more thing that I want to do is this lid right here. I want it to open up and then I want the force field to affect the UV sphere. And we can actually set this up very easily by selecting it, enabling collision over on the right side and making sure the field absorption is set to a value of one. Then if we select the force field right here, we're going to enable the absorption option in this checkbox. Now 
the absorption basically acts like a shield for the wind force field. With the wind factor set to 1, no force field is going to be able to pass through that object. So now let's go ahead and play our animation. And you can see it's not affecting it, but if I rotate this, now the UV sphere is affected by that wind force field. So let's animate this. I want it to start right about frame 70 or so. So right at frame 70, we're going to hit K with the lid selected, select rotation, 10 frames later. Let's rotate this along the Y by 90, negative 90, then hit K and add in another rotation keyframe. So over, so when it comes down, it's going to stay for about 10 frames. And when the lid opens up, then it's going to shoot over and go through the loops. Let's go ahead and select the loops. And one setting I forgot to do is the friction. We're going to set both of these to a value of zero. And this will make sure that the loops basically are like ice for the UV sphere. So it doesn't get stuck at all. Moving down here, we're going to add in a new constraint for this object. We want it to rotate at this position, and this is when we're going to use the hinge option. So with it selected, let's go rigid body. We're going to leave the type on active. We're going to change the shape type to mesh. And then for the margin, we're going to go down to zero. The friction, we will also go down to around 0.1. Select this object here. We're going to go rigid body and leave the type on passive. Same thing for this object, rigid body, set it over to passive, and that's basically all we need to do. Then we'll select this object, holding shift, select the beam right here, and let's connect them together. We're going to go object down to rigid body and then select connect. And with the empty, we're going to move it down and then place it right on the point where it's going to be rotating. So right about here looks pretty good. For the constraint settings, we're going to come over to the type and switch it over to the hinge option. Now hinges work based on the Z rotation. So we need to actually rotate this so the Z is pointed in this direction. So let's hit R, then X, type 90, and enter. And now the constraint should work properly. But one more thing, I'm going to select my object right here. And in the settings, I'm going to turn on deactivation and start deactivation. This will make sure that the object does not move until another object actually collides with it. So now if we restart our animation and play it, goes around and then collides with the hinge, just like that. Now one thing that I'm going to change real quick is over in the scene panel, we're going to open up the rigid body world settings. Firstly, this speed I think moves a little bit too slow, so let's bring it up to 1.3. Next, we're going to change the sub steps right here up to 20 and then the solver iterations to 20 as well. This will just make sure that the simulation is a little bit more accurate and there's not as many errors. Next, the simulation end frame ends at frame 250. And since our animation is gonna be pretty long, let's set this all the way up to 650. Moving on to the funnel, let's select this object and in the physics properties, let's enable rigid body. We'll set the type over to passive, change the shape over to mesh, and then for the friction, let's go all the way up to a value of one. This will make sure that the UV sphere doesn't slide around this that often, but enters the funnel pretty quickly. Down here, we're going to select the ramp. We'll go rigid body, set it over to passive, and then change the shape over to mesh. For this object, we're going to enable rigid body. We're going to select animated because of what I want is for this to smack into the UV sphere, sending it all the way over here and crashing into this object. Now, before we animate it, we need to find out when the UV sphere actually goes through the funnel. So let's play our animation and then see when it goes through. We can see it exited right about frame 300. So on frame 305, with this object selected, let's press K and go location to add in a new keyframe. We'll go over to frame 310, press G and X, move it all the way over here, press K, and then add in another location keyframe. Now for these other objects, let's first select our big wall right here. We're going to select rigid body. We're going to leave the type on active, but we're going to change the mass of this object all the way up to 75. This way it weighs way more and it's going to be able to crash through all of these cubes right here. I'm also going to turn on deactivation and start deactivated so it doesn't move until the UV sphere collides with it. Next up, let's select one of the cubes on the tower, then we'll box select the rest of them. We're going to select rigid body with that active one. We're going to set the mass of these to 0 
so the cubes weigh way less and are going to be able to fly all over the place. We're also going to again turn on deactivation and start deactivated and also make sure the collision margin is set to zero. Then to copy all of these settings to the rest of the objects, let's go over to object down to rigid body and then click on copy from active. Now if we select any of them, it's going to share those exact same settings. Let's save our project again and then finally for the ground we're going to select it, enable rigid body, switch it over to passive, and then make sure the shape right here is set over to mesh. With that done we can save our project and then let's bake this in and make sure everything is working properly. So go ahead over in the scene panel, select bake right here. Once the bake has finished, go through and double check that everything is working properly, especially over here with the funnel object. A lot of my testing, I've noticed that this part is pretty inconsistent. On some bakes, it will fall through at around 300, but in this case, it actually did not fall through until around 350. So what I had to do was end up deleting the bake option and selecting this cube and moving these keyframes to where the sphere actually goes through. So just go through, double check that everything works properly. And if it does, then we can move on to the render settings and animation for the camera. The final step in this animation is to animate the camera following the UV sphere. You can use some tracking techniques if you want to, but I find it easier just to kind of animate it by hand. You can do this by selecting the camera, hitting K and going ro location and rotation. From here, you can just play the animation move the camera down and kind of follow it to where it goes through. I like to position my camera right about here at frame 60 or so, then add in another location keyframe. We'll go through and then as it's going through, we can move it around here, kind of zoom out a little bit as well, something like that, hit K, location, rotation. And then you can also just go back and make sure that it works properly, that you can still see the UV sphere and you get the idea for the rest of the animation. Just basically follow the animation, move your camera into place, then add in new keyframes. All right, I've finished animating the camera and here is the final result. Again, feel free to add in your own obstacles as well for the UV sphere to go through or change it up however you like. There are basic materials and render settings already in place, so all you have to do is click render animation and there you go. That is a basic overview of the rigid body system. If you made it all the way to the end and made something cool, make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you have other ideas for tutorials you would like to see in the future, leave them in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching and I will see you all in the next one.